Hello and welcome. In this video, we will perform multiple linear regression using sklearn. The sklearn package includes different data sets to practice different machine learning algorithms. Our first step, therefore, is to import those data sets via from sklearn import data sets. Now, we are calling the Boston data sets as we will work with the Boston house price data set, which is the data set for regression algorithms. So let's do that by data sets dot load underscore Boston and let's store that in a variable which we are just calling Boston. So let's execute that and print out what we got here. As you see, we are getting a lot of information. So the first array here, data, is containing the values for the independent variable. The second one, target, is containing the values for the dependent variable. The third one, feature names, is just the names of the independent variables here and the DSCR one here described is a de detailed description of both the independent and dependent variables. So let's take an example here. Feature name we have crim but we don't know what crim is about so we can check in the description. Crim is per capita crime rate by town. And also we are getting information like number of attributes so number of independent variables 13 we are getting the information that the median value attribute 14 is usually the target. So what it is, MEDW, median value of owner-occupied homes in $1,000 is the dependent variable, right? Now, very convenient is that we already know which is the dependent and the independent variable. So we can just assign X, so the independent variables, as Boston.data. So we are just extracting this array here containing the independent variables. And also we can define y as the dependent variable here target. So we are just using boston.target. And we can execute that and have defined both our independent variables and our dependent variable. Now that we have the independent and dependent variable, we are splitting the whole data set into training and testing data. The reason behind this is to use the training data to train our model and the testing data to check if the model is doing good in predicting stuff. So we are providing the independent variable test data to the model and compare the prediction of this model with the testing data for the dependent variable. In case you are confused right now, you will see what we will do when approaching to the prediction. So let's do the split by importing from sklearn.model selection selection of course import train test split and let's minimize that a bit here I hope you can read that let's execute that and let's understand how this function is working like so let's use this function train test split and now we have to provide arguments and we are providing x and y as the arguments so our independent and our dependent variables and also we have to define the test underscore size and this is just the share of the testing data of the whole data set so let us take 0.3 here and we are getting 30% of the whole data as testing data. An additional optional argument is the random underscore state argument which just enables you to repeat the exact same data split again. So you can just uh, uh, get take any number here so 1, 2, 3, whatever you like and yeah, if you are not providing this, which you don't necessarily have to, you are always getting another split as the split is randomly sorting the data into training and testing data. Okay, so let's execute that. And as you see, we are getting four arrays here. This is the, the X training data, the X testing data, the Y training data, and the Y testing data. Okay, so we can just assign that to variables. So let's do that. Let's assign x underscore train, x underscore test, y underscore train, and y underscore test here. We are just assigning that to our defined function here. So let's just copy paste that here. Okay, you can't. Can I get this a bit? Yeah, this is not good. Wait, let me split that in more lines maybe. 
Well, I don't like it when the font is too small. So I hope you can read this. Now, okay, we have done that. Let's execute that. And now, for example, we have our training data here as one array and we have our testing data as one array and so on and so forth, okay? So yeah, we are ready to define our model. So first, let's get the linear regression model by importing from sklearn import linear underscore model. And then we're defining the model like we did in the simple linear regression. We're just using linear underscore model dot um, linear regression, right? Now we are fitting the model to the training data. So we are using model dot fit and use x train and y train here, okay? And there we are, we have defined our model. So let's execute that. And now we can use this model to predict something, stuff. We can predict some house prices now. So what makes sense to predict now to check if our model is performing good or not? We can use the x test data to predict y and compare the results of this prediction with the actual y values which are stored in y test. So let us therefore define y underscore predict as model dot predict and then we're taking the x test values. Okay, so let's execute that. And now we can compare the y pred values, so let's print them out here, with the actual y values y underscore test. So the difference between those values here, so y predicted and y test, let's minimize that a bit, maybe we, we can get both on the screen, uh, close. So the difference between those is the error, which I explained in the R squared tutorial. So let's actually calculate the error here. So we could just subtract uh, y pred from y test and we would get the error. So we are getting an array containing every single error. And a very popular measure for, um, for model performance is the mean squared error. And we can actually just calculate that by hand by just using y test minus y predict. So this is the error again. And we can just square that error and afterwards take the mean out of that. And this is the mean squared error. Now, if you are lazy or you are just not interested in calculating that by hand, you can go the easy way and just import from sklearn, underscore, not underscore, dot matrix, uh, import, I think it's mean, yeah, mean squared error. And then you can just call the function mean squared error and uh, provide the true y values here, y test, and the predicted y values. And as you see, we're getting the exact same results here, right? So this is just the, yeah, the math behind it, if you want to call it like this. Another important measure for model performance or model accuracy is the R squared. And I did a separate video on that, so be kindly invited to check that out. So I'm not going into details here to calculate the R squared by hand. We have to calculate the total sum of squares, SST. So we can do that by just subtracting from the actual Y values. We're just subtracting the mean of those values, squaring that, and afterwards just take the sum out of that. So we have calculated the total sum of squares. What we also need is the residual sum of squared SSE and that is calculated by getting again the error so the actual values minus the predicted values and then we are just squaring that again and afterwards take the sum out of that okay so we have calculated SST and SSE and with that we can calculate the R squared by just uh, 1 minus SSE divided by SST so this is just the formula for R squared. I've explained that in detail in the in the R squared tutorial. So check that out again. And as you see, we're getting an R squared here. So again, if you are lazy, you can use the sklearn uh, package again. So you can just use sklearn matrix import R squared score here, and then use R squared score 
and provide the true values again, so the test values and the predicted values, and as you see, you are getting the exact same result again. So, yeah, um, what else can we do? We can finally better understand what is happening here. So, how do we get the predicted y value? Therefore, let us take a look at the regression equation again. Okay, I've split my screen here. On the left hand side you see the multiple regression equation in general and in our example. And what I also did was printing out the coefficients of our model and the intercept and also the names again. So these are 13 coefficients and they're just the coefficients for those feature names. So in general, as you see here, we have beta zero, which is our intercept. So how can we understand that? Well, if imagine every of your x variables, so crim, zn, indus, and so on, every of those x variables is zero, then you would have a prediction of a house price of 46,000, okay? And those beta 1, beta 2, until beta 13 are just the coefficients here of our model. So we have 13 coefficients here. Now you have to provide the x values, which you are getting. For, for example, if you are interested in a certain house, um, you are checking the crime rate and um, insert the crime rate for this x and do that for every single independent variable. And then you are getting a y predicted value. So again, maybe more practical, we have the house price as the y, then the intercept plus the first coefficient, which is this one here. And this makes somehow sense. We have a negative coefficient here. So if the crime rate is uh, getting higher, the house price will get lower. So that somehow makes sense, right? And the same logic for the rest. So for Zn, we have a positive coefficient. So that is increasing the house price and so on. I hope I made this understandable and covered some additional useful stuff here. In the future I'm covering other machine learning algorithms on other sklearn data sets and maybe practical data sets, so I would love to welcome you on future videos. If you have any questions or problems, please feel free to drop me a comment. If you enjoyed the video or could extract value out of it, please like this video and subscribe to the channel. I'm looking forward to seeing you in the upcoming videos. Have a nice time. Bye bye.